Hi, this video is again more about lists, parallel lists, or corresponding lists. So, corresponding lists are when you want to keep the two lists tied together by something. For example, a name and a score, or a name and an address, a name and a GPA. So, something like that, right? Corresponding lists. And in this case, we're going to tie the lists by index. So if you look at this program, you have names and scores. They are initially empty. Every time we add a name at the same corresponding index, you would add a score for that person. So the concept of parallel lists is something that you maintain, as you have seen from the material that you have covered so far. So in this case, we are going to keep reading names from the user and the scores until they enter no. We ask them for, you know, do you want to enter more? And when they say no, we're going to stop reading. And we're going to calculate a few things. I have total and average. Notice how I declare all the variables, so I know what I'm going to use. This says, do you want to add more? That would be the answer for that. The A name is a single name that they enter. A score is a single score that they enter. Then we do some data validation. If I'm not, then you should be doing it. We append it to the list, and then we ask for more. So here's a welcome message that gets printed um, while entry is yes, why, and we started at why, so we can read at least one score and name. We ask the user to enter the student's name, goes into a name, enter the corresponding score, goes into a score, gets converted into int. Then you do names, which is my list, dot append the single name. So this has to be a list. This is a single string scores dot append a single score so now these two things have been added to my list and then ask them do you want to enter more and if they say yes um here's data validation to check if they say yes or no well if they say neither yes nor no then i say invalid and i stay in this loop until they enter the right data if not we go back to this while if they have said yes then we are going to simply read the next name and the next score and keep doing that. Notice this variable gets overwritten, but then we have appended it to the list, right? So the list is getting built. Then we come here and we print the student database information. Um, this is just a heading. We get the length of the names, which is the length of the list, number of names I have, into a variable called length. So I can use that in my for loop Remember for num, index, it doesn't matter. This is a variable that keeps track of the index. So for index in range of length. So if I added three names, then length would have three. We go through and print the name score bracket index. Index starts at zero. Remember how we looked at the previous example with the colors? Index starts at zero. And you should take this and put it through the pythontutor.com and visualize the code if you haven't done that. Again, we saw how to do that in the previous lesson three video with colors. So you do that, and then you take each score at that index. You add it to total. You get a total when the for loop is done. Then you take that, and you divide it by the number of students, and you'll get the average score. So if we run the program, it looks like this. Student AA gets a score of 34. Yes, I want to add more. Student BB gets a score of 67. If I say anything other than yes or no, it says nope, invalid. So student CC gets a score of 98. And then I say no. And it tells me, well, these are the scores. So formatting is a little off, but you can fix that. The class average is 66.33, which is formatted to two decimal places. Right? So this is how you go through and add whatever it is you want to corresponding lists and do some something with the data.